Another day and more transfer portal news for your Red Raiders. In today's video, we'll discuss the Red Raiders making a top six list for a highly coveted transfer. Plus, discuss the latest in the coaching carousel, including a Matador tweet that, let's just say, stirred the pot in Red Raider Nation. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxwell. It's here for the Back to 12 podcast. And y'all know the drill by now. Once again, like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell if you want daily updates on everything Texas Tech men's basketball, whether it's on the hardwood, on the recruiting trail, or anything in between. We've got you covered right here on the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube today in the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, let's jump into this. As Texas Tech has made the top six of a, well, Transfer portal target that we've talked multiple times about on this year's channel. Um, it is Brendan Wenzel, the Wyoming transfer. He has TCU, Creighton, Mississippi State, Texas Tech, SMU, and Oklahoma State currently in his top six. He is a 6'7 guard with one year of eligibility remaining. He actually had a pretty solid season up in Wyoming for the Cowboys, where he averaged just about 11 and a half points. 11.6 to be exact, over five rebounds per game, 1.1 assist, and shot north of 37% from three. He can guard multiple positions, as we've discussed here on this channel at Nauseam. He's a guy with a high basketball IQ, more of a guy that's going to play off the ball. My comparison for him is a more offensively skilled Justin Gray and maybe a little bit worse on the defensive end. But that's the kind of body type he has, at least in terms of frame and everything, but he's just a little bit more wiry. Now, when it comes to what's worth noting about him, right, I think this is big in the sense that we have it on good authority over at scarletandblackinsider.com. By the way, go join one of the fastest growing communities in the Texas tech space over on the scarletandblackinsider.com for instant updates on everything Texas Tech men's basketball. When it comes to Winslow, though, he wants to play in Texas his last collegiate season. He is a San Antonio native. Oh, and by the way, I'm not saying this is going to be the be-all, end-all in his recruitment process, but his dad is an alumni, so there you go. I think he's kind of a guy that could come off the bench for the Red Raiders, play meaningful minutes, and be a really good, versatile wing for Texas Tech in terms of his skill set, and you're not going to have to run a play for him. He is a catch-and-shoot guy and a guy that understands how to find space and run off screens. So he's a very, very interesting target for Texas Tech, and I would not be surprised if here once dead period ends in the coming days if you hear about B-Dub potentially having an official visit out to the 806 because if you remember, we updated you not too long ago here on this very channel that he was on an unofficial visit to Texas Tech when he was coming back down from Wyoming, getting his stuff up there and bringing it back down to Texas. So he has already been in the Womble, seeing the coaches and everything like that. So don't be surprised if he actually visits Texas Tech in an official capacity here in the not too distant future. All right, let's get into... Uh, the coaching carousel stuff. And I want to preface everything I'm about to say in this video that potentially by the time you hear it, it could be outdated. That's how fast the coaching carousel stuff goes. But I did want to talk about the Matador Club in this Grant McCaslin tweet. So let's go ahead and put that on your screen right now. Here it is. And for those that don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on. We'll talk about here more in just a second. But they say the at coach Grant Mack era is just getting started. 23 wins back in the NCAA tournament and a dominant record at the USA. Chapter two soon. Okay. You may be thinking to yourself, yeah, RC, that's obvious. Why? Why? Of course, they're going to hype up their coach. I would agree with you, but let's lay the groundwork a little bit here in the sense of the dominoes that have already fallen and potentially that may fall into the future that could impact that tweet. For those that don't know, Coach Calipari officially is the head coach at Arkansas. That's not going to change. That has been official, and they have announced it. Now Kentucky is going after at least what social media people are saying and people in the know in terms of following Kentucky, that Scott Drew is a prime target, the Baylor head coach. Why does that impact Texas Tech, you might ask? Well, Grant McCaslin is an alumni. He also coached on the Baylor staff there. Could Baylor target him? as a potential Scott Drew replacement. 
I think it's fair to say he would be in the running. There's no doubt about that. In fact, multiple national college basketball media members have said if, this is an if right now, Scott Drew leaves Baylor to go to Kentucky. That's a sizable if because at the current time of this recording, which is mid-morning on Wednesday, April 10th for a peek behind the curtain, Scott Drew, there was a flight from Waco to Lexington. He was not on it, okay? He was actually in Waco with a booster going to lunch or brunch or I don't know what the hell he was doing, but he was at a meal with a booster there, right? But if Drew leaves for Baylor for Kentucky, I can promise you this. Texas Tech fans aren't going to want to hear it, but I think it's the reality. Grant McCaslin would likely be the first call. It's either him or Jerome Tang. It's one of those two guys, and I think with Grant McCaslin's long-term success that he's had as a head coach, albeit maybe at the mid-major level, but then what he did at Texas Tech last year, I think he'd be the first phone call for Baylor. Now, obviously, I don't want to see that happen um, because I like Grant McCaslin as a head coach, but that's where we're at right now. Um, and again, if you're watching this video, some of these details may change by the time you see it. But as we stand right now, I think that, hey, this is where we're at in terms of Scott Drew. Kentucky feels like they're showing more interest than Scott Drew right now. Things can change in that regard. But if Scott Drew were to leave for Kentucky, which is a sizable if at the time of this recording, I think Grant McCaslin would be in the mix there. But I want to talk about that tweet a little bit more, and I'll put it up on the screen here for you. Again, you think about the timing of this tweet. It was early in the morning, people. It was about 9.30 in the morning when this tweet went out. I find it very interesting in the sense of it would not shock me at all if here in the not-too-distant future you hear a restructuring or Grant McCaslin getting some type of deal or more NIL money being pulled in for Texas Tech men's basketball to appease Grant McCaslin or whatever it may be in terms of the verbiage you want to use. But I will say this, I do think from right now, the standpoint that we are talking about, and again, it is Wednesday, April 10th, Baylor would be dumb if Scott Drew did decide to go to Kentucky, not to call Grant McCaslin, but I do think Texas Tech is in a good spot financially to potentially keep him. It would just be his decision at that point. I just found it very, very interesting from a timing perspective that this tweet came out. And at the time of this recording, again, I know if you take a shot for every time I've said that, you're probably passed out drunk at this point. When the tweet came out, okay, so we're going to find it interesting in the sense that is there a new deal for Grant McCaslin? What are the details? What is moving forward for the Red Raiders? But that tweet, as I mentioned, came out from the Matador Club. And then the other news in today's video that you need to know about is B-Dub, Brendan Wenzel. He has Texas Tech currently in his top eight alongside schools like TCU, Creighton, Mississippi State, SMU. And then you've got Oklahoma State. It's worth noting that his dad is an alumni of Texas Tech and it's been reported to us over at the Scarlet and Black Insider that he wants to play his last year of college basketball in the state of Texas if he can. So you think about it, you've got TCU on there, Texas Tech, SMU. You would think from that statement that I just said that those would be the three favorites. He's a guy that's super interesting and a guy that I think could be a pivotal bench piece that brings depth, but also versatility for the Red Raiders if he were to wear the Scarlet and Black. All right, one more time, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. We'll keep you updated on everything Texas Tech men's basketball, well, all year long, but really right now, because it is a whirlwind. There is a ton of information coming out there, so we'll keep you up to date, whether that's guys visiting or set to visit the Red Raiders, guys that make their top six list in terms of Texas Tech being in it, coaching carousel news, and much, much more. So like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel.